Hi, I'm Jane Peterson of the Human Systems Institute. Some people call me the Systems Doctor. I'm here today to show you the Relationships web app, how you can use it with the virtual sessions that you may be doing with your clients, whether it's a coaching client or a therapy client. The Relationships web app will help you bring your client's experience of their relationships with significant others into the session, even if they're not there with you personally. So this is the Relationships workspace. Our relationships were originally casino-grade poker chips, and we made them to work with people who are in business or medical or legal settings where dolls and things weren't appropriate. So they're very simple. They've got a very round shape here. This is a nose up here, this bump on the one thing. The two bumps on the side here are the ears and you can just type in a name. And the functional features are if you want to delete a chip, you do that. If you want to select a chip, you move it here. This allows you to enlarge or reduce the size and scale of a chip. This allows you to turn it. Okay, so that's the very simple nature of these chips. So you're looking at a person that's being represented from above. And let's just get two chips out here on the tabletop, so to speak. And I'm going to reduce the size of this one slightly so they're close to the same size. And we'll just say that this is a couple. So we have a him and a her in this case. So you're looking from above. Here's a, two people facing each other very close. And it seems like something this simple would not be able to produce powerful results in your sessions, but I know that it does. And one of the things I've learned is that I've taught constellation work and this somatic kind of approach for over a decade. And when you represent a group of people on the floor in a constellation, for instance, whether it's a family or a business, there's a lot going on. And it's easy to lose sight of the underlying patterns that shape the relationships. So when we go to something, a simple tool like this, what this allows us to do is very quickly and very easily see the pattern underneath all the behavior that's driving the dynamics in the relationship. So the simplicity is actually a real benefit here. Now, if I said, Let's say you were a client and I'm working with you and I'd ask you to place yourself and your partner and you placed yourself like this, very, very close. So I would have already guessed of two possibilities, for, for instance. One is that you're very, very intimate. It's a very close and intimate scene or that you're in conflict. And either one could be true, but we already know something just by having this placement position for us. So now let's say instead of a couple, I'm looking at a boss and an employee. Now if you saw a boss, if I said to you, show me how your relationship is with your boss and this is the picture that your client made, I would already know that there's probably conflict here. Because this is very close for a less intimate relationship like a work relationship. If however the boss was positioned here and the employee was positioned about there, um, then it would feel like a normal functional relationship. Now one of the things that we've learned in creating these chips and in using them is that gaze is highly significant to human beings because it's signaling where our attention is and where our intention is. So if we go back to our family and we have maybe a father, um, a mother, and let's add a child to this scenario. And if you were to see a scene like this, if you were to have the father and the mother, which I could type better, it would be like that. And you were to see a scenario where mom and dad are standing pretty close and they are looking at their child. That looks like a pretty functional relationship. Mother and father both have access to each other. It's clear that the child has access to both parents. However, if your client were to set up something like this, you would immediately know that something is not working right in this system. Because what is father looking at? Why is he turned away? And so then it can become very simple just to add another element and inquire as to what 
what's going on, what is it that dad's looking at. Maybe it's his own father. Uh, maybe there's a very serious issue at work where there's a loss of money. He's maybe lost money in the business, for instance. Whatever it is, you have a sense of what's going on in this family system very quickly. You can see patterns that have happened. Now, if this scenario was a boss again, and we had an employee, or perhaps two employees, and we have either a project or a company, uh, something that the team is focused on. And you were to see a situation where the employees are looking at the project, but the boss is not, then immediately you already know quite a lot about how well this group is working. And you know where to inquire, where the leverage points are to help the improve in the system. Now, if you have a situation like this, maybe let's say, and I'm sure some of you have seen this, the employees are fighting with each other for some reason, and the boss is distracted by his higher management, and let's say this is a service-based organization, and there are clients, and then people are wondering why the clients are getting a little bored and distracted and looking elsewhere for someone to pay attention to them. So these are very simple examples that I'm showing right here, but just to show the power of a simple representation of gaze, proximity, and just the orientation of a group of people in space. These simple, simple explanations show the underlying dynamics that are present in a system very, very quickly in a way that both you and your client can see them so that you can begin to discuss in more depth what's happening in the system and to hopefully find better orders that are more functional, that are more satisfying, and produce better results.